Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about Effects Photo Studio and also Effects Studio Pro. We'll start by booting it up and when you first start it you get a choice to import photos, load a photo, or open recent. So I'll just jump to a photo I've looked at recently. The overall interface of this program is pretty simple. Up at the top you have most of your options. Uh, run through those, zoom in, zoom out, fill screen, actual size. Comparing photos, very nice feature, full screen. I'll jump into that right now. And then you have your options for creating effects, cropping, rotating, and adjusting. Uh, one thing you'll see down near the bottom is all your effects. You get a nice little preview of the individual one for that photo that you're looking at right now. You can see there's a lot of different categories, so you can either choose to view all effects or just an individual category when you're looking through things. One thing you'll notice is a little star kicking around down in a corner of uh, each of these previews, and that's for being able to add it as a favorite. In this case, I look at uh, black and white and red comics just out of curiosity, but for now I'll cancel that and jump back to the favorites down here, some of these that I have. I really like this one, I've played with it before, so I'll make that a favorite. And then let's jump over and see how many favorites I currently have. These are ones I've used in the past and they'll always be around. If I ever wanted to get rid of them, I could just click the star once again. So let's go ahead and try to make uh, an image, and I'm kind of go for a cartoonish looking shot. So we'll start with this pencil paint, which is one of my favorites. And I'm going to tweak it a little bit. If you zoom out, you'd be able to see that some live changes are taking place. And then I'll click Apply. And you can see that's very quick. And on top of that, I now want to give it just a bit of a feel. Uh, so I'll choose this Amsterdam, which is a preset. Crank the contrast up a bit. You can see how it changes over on the left. And I'll apply that one also. And just to give it another tweak, I'm sort of going to want to change the color a little bit. So I select one more preset, or one more favorite, the Pacific. But I'll tweak it down a bit. I don't want it too drastic here. And just to show you, I can click on the compare, and there you see the before and after shot. So I click apply. And once again, you can see how fast that takes place. So this is getting very close to what I want. Uh, just for fun, I'll see how it looks up close and personal. Uh, go into full screen. And then to get out of that, you can just double click again, and you're back to where you were. If you ever want to see the full screen, um, you can double click and it gets rid of the favorites down at the bottom. But one thing, after all these changes I've made, I can save this as a preset, and we'll combine all the favorites I've applied and any other changes I've made. So I go ahead and add a preset, and then I'll jump over here to the presets, and you can see I now have one preset. What's nifty about this is you can share these presets with others. If you click on that little button, you'll be able to you name the preset and you get a code. So you can share that on Flickr or Twitter or just copy that code right from there. So now I'll go ahead and save that image because I really like it. And so you get the typical save dialog. But now that I have a preset, I'll go ahead and open another shot. What you can see when you import is you get access to your Aperture, iPhoto, and Lightroom libraries. And you can see all the images below. So I selected one and open it. And now I have a new image, but I can choose that new preset and apply my fun comic. And here it applies all the changes that I've made. That's three different favorites uh, right away. You can see it takes a little bit longer, but it's still very quick. 
But in this case, I want to adjust, make a few last minute tweaks to do adjustment. So you can always have control over exposure, brightness, saturation, contrast, and hue. So I crank up the exposure and the saturation just a bit to try to get it to look a little closer to the other image we had. Uh, since this one started out a little bit, it needed just a few extra tweaks. And I get to what I like. and click apply. And so when you have a whole sequence of photos and you'd like to make certain changes to them, these presets are really nice to be able to get a nice look. And I'll go ahead and save this one as well. You can see this is a very simple interface but you can make rather powerful changes very quickly. It's uh, very useful for that. And it's also very similar to the iPhone and iPad app. You always have the option to share on several of the basic uh, websites and uh, services. But I won't do any of that right now. Uh, it's a very good app. If you like the iPhone or the iPad app, this is very similar. Let me just show you uh, the FX, FX Photo Studio Pro has a very similar interface but the big difference here is under the adjustment one thing is you can open vastly more images and bigger images so you can do full raw images that are up to 30 meg and so I had a Canon with 20 meg uh, photos but you can see here the adjustment is vastly better you also have levels and you can have sharpening and removal noise and then you can also control the shadows and highlights and I'll just tweak this a bit I want to uh, tone down my highlights a bit and bring out the shadows so I make a few tweaks this gets rid of some of the really dark areas and you can see here it's not really easy to see but if you look in the very center around the crowd area you can see it's not quite as dark anymore and the light beaming down from above wasn't quite as bright and so I like that and so you can see this is definitely has more uh, capability under the adjustment window and also as I said the file formats and file sizes can handle larger so I hope you like that little walkthrough um, and if you want more information uh, feel free to post a comment here and I'll try to get back to you one thing that was missing from this standalone app is the new masking feature they recently put in the iPhone and iPad versions of this program and hopefully they'll get the developers will get that in in an update um, in the future thanks for listening